Welcome back. You're watching Young Turks. We're in conversation with Dr. Pavan Goenka and the co-founder of Agnikul, an uh, Indian startup that has created history today. We've seen Agnikul uh, finally take off. Uh, uh, what can we expect in the rest of this fiscal year? We looked at the sky route that had done suborbital launch in 2022 to start doing the orbital launch. And hopefully by end of this year or early next year, we will see orbital launch of sky route happen. And after that, they will get into a commercial, uh, commercial application. Similarly, what Agnikul has demonstrated today with the suborbital launch will translate to orbital launch. And Srinath should tell you when he expects to do that. I want him to do it faster than he thinks or he wants. Uh, so that, that also becomes another offering uh, from India. And the third one is the SSLV rocket. Uh, which was developed by ISRO and right now in the process of getting transferred to private sector uh, using a bidding process. Uh, we'll also start uh, uh, producing uh, sort of uh, uh, on, on, a, on a commercial basis uh, the rockets uh, starting next year. So all these three will make us very uh, well equipped to handle small launches or small satellites flight launches uh, for global uh, requirement. Mm -hmm. And we have the new uh, launch vehicle, launch center that's coming up mm -hmm. in, uh, in in south of uh, Tamil Nadu, uh, and that will uh, create the capacity. So that's one piece. The second piece is to do with uh, overall satellites and payloads, where Pixel uh, is playing a very big role, and they have their constellation, and that will be launched uh, starting this uh, in the next three to four months. Uh, and that's going to be a very big offering in terms of providing service, again, not just in India, but globally. Dhruva Space uh, is, is making uh, another sort of foray uh, or new thing where they are going to provide satellite as a service. Mm. Uh, and they have a satellite called LEAP Leap. Uh, there for the first payload will be coming up from outside India actually uh, and creates almost a new sort of business opportunity for Indian startups uh, by creating satellite as a service. Galaxy is getting into totally new technology, uh, uh, SAR uh, uh, technology that is again going to be giving amazing uh, which has never been done before, first time in the world. The orbital launch, Srinath, what's your timeline and what's the timeline that Dr. Goenka has given you? One thing that we were able to achieve in this launch is, you know, we validated all of the software and the guidance, navigation and control algorithms that are needed for orbital flight. Um, so ideally, it should not take that long to get to orbit. Uh, we will target something like within this financial year to get it done. Um, let's see if that is the timeline that Dr. Dwayne will be okay with. I think about uh, six to nine months would be a good time frame to target. Give us a sense of uh, where the funding you believe is most likely to come in from and also uh, in terms of G2G partnerships uh, and, you know, government linkages, global government linkages with India's private sector startup ecosystem. What do you see on that front? The space sector is a sector that globally uh, is getting a lot of attention from uh, investors uh, uh, everywhere. Uh, and and in India, a couple of successes like what we saw today in Agnikul uh, would clearly create a lot more interest in investment, both from Indian investors as well as from investors from outside India. Uh, we have talked, uh, I have talked personally to at least half a dozen VC funds in India and they're all kind of waiting in the wings. Some of them have jumped in and invested. Some of them are waiting to see uh, what's happening next. And I think that with the success of Agnikul today and with few more things that I expect to happen in the next three to four months, there will be a significant uh, positive interest that will come in from within India. And from outside India, uh, we have had many inquiries from uh, even sovereign funds uh, to see whether they can come in and invest in the space sector in India. Uh, frankly, for some of these funds, the Ticket size right now is not large enough uh, to, to, to be able to come in. And some of them, uh, the VC funds from outside, are looking at the Indian space sector very, very carefully. This Now, coming to G2G um, and uh, G2B uh, yeah, sort of uh, collaboration, uh, I think uh, we need to do a lot of work in showcasing what Indian space sector is all about. Um, ISRO is well known. Uh, everybody in the world knows what ISRO is able to do, what it has done, and what it can do. What is not well known is what the Indian private sector can do in a space. We have to bring uh, visibility to all of this. And I think once we do that, the inherent benefit that India has uh, in terms of uh, uh, the sort of uh, favorable cost added to it, the technology uh, that we are, uh, we are bringing in, where ISRO was always up there, now private sector is also getting there, and the quality consistency 
uh, reliability that we have in all the ISRO offerings, which same thing I hope that private sector will also be able to emulate. I think we'll have a very powerful offering uh, for the globe, uh, quality, uh, reliability, technology, and cost. Absolutely. And when we add it all together, uh, I hope that the ambitious plan that we have set up of reaching $44 billion of space economy by 2033 uh, can be met. And as far as Agnikul is concerned, you know, where do you see demand? What kind of demand uh, are you already starting to see? And what does that mean in terms of your ability to scale up? You've raised about $40 million so far. Uh, you know, the last round you did about 27-odd million. Uh, are you in the market for more funds? Yeah. Um, I think there's a lot of customer demand in the small satellite space. There are people looking to, you know, build better remaining satellites, better, com better communication satellites. Uh, and, you know, there's a lot of validation of small satellites addressing the commercial demand uh, from the entire Starlink configuration, uh, you know, constellation of uh, satellites working. So we see that as a recurring demand. We see that from Europe. We see that from Asia. We see that even from the U.S. sometimes. Uh, but I think the more interesting aspect is all the players who are now waking up and understanding what data from space can do for them. Right now, this is opening up an entire new set of customers, an entire new set of applications that can be done from space. People are looking at doing a lot of, you know, manufacturing processes that need microgravity. People are trying to, you know, shift cooling systems to space because, you know, cooling is available for free if you orient yourself away from the sun and so on. So I think that is very interesting. Uh, what we can offer to our customers is, you know, that elimination of a waiting period to get to orbit. Right, that is what we're targeting. Today, the biggest problem, you know, we, we hear about a lot of SpaceX launches happening, a lot of other launches also happening. Yeah. But I think one particular area that is not addressed is will we be able to customize, a, a, you know, a, a launch for a small rocket, a small satellite? I've not seen that happen. Still, small satellites have to do a ride share to space. Okay. And so, any small satellite that, you know, do a dedicated ride to orbit, mm. uh, that is a good target customer. Just on the back of what you've been able to do with Agniban, how much did it cost you to take this uh, up, uh, to put this together? Uh, and what is the kind of cost advantage that you believe Indian startups will be able to offer? I think the cost advantage in space technology comes actually from engineering differentiation, right? You, you know, there's a saying that, you know, you, there's no such thing as a low quality space product. <laughs> Right. Uh, so you really cannot compromise and cut corners on cost just to get a particular product at a particular price out. It has to meet a certain standard. So the cost efficiencies that we have been able to achieve in Agnikul is by using engineering, you know, uh, innovations like, you know, single piece 3D printed engine. Our entire avionics architecture is, you know, based out of a regular Ethernet protocol, which is what we all use for our, you know, day-to-day -day networking. So those kind of things is what is going to actually make us more cost-effective. But I think the bigger goal for Agnikul itself is about being available for customers when we need them, as opposed to making us the cheapest available launcher in the world. Of course, we don't want to, you know, you know, make it a very pricey launch. I think we will still be among the uh, probably the most affordable launch vehicles in the world. But the target is not to keep on going on lower on prices, but to keep on giving more flexibility to customers. Mm. It What we're really targeting is basically a customer just needs to give us three parameters, right? Where they would like to launch from, mm. which orbit they would want to go to, and how much mass they're carrying in that particular flight. And that we should be able to configure a vehicle just for us there. So that is the pursuit we are in, and so that automatically addresses the loss of you know cost advantages and time advantages and so on. So how much did it cost to uh, put Agniban together? Um, yeah, I don't know if I can disclose that right now here, but uh, it was I think compared to other efforts in the world, I think it has been at a fractional cost. Fractional. Uh, because a lot of these. Yeah. yeah, because this is a lot of lot of innovation here, right? I can just give you an example of one part of the vehicle. A typical rocket engine usually costs, I think, of this class probably costs about seventy to eighty lakhs. I would say uh, about hundred thousand dollars is what I've heard. Mm. And we were because of a three D printing technology, we were able to get that done in literally one tenth of that. Srinath, you know, uh, what's what's the next target now? What's the next goal that you've set for yourself? Of course, going orbital is the one that Dr. Goinka has put on your table. Uh, but uh, you know, what's the next? And in terms of fundraise, uh, how much and when do you expect to raise more? Um, I think the next big target would be uh, the orbital launch, as uh, Dr. Goenka also rightly said. Uh, that is what is going to give us a commercial product that will quickly address the existing gap in the market today. 
in in parallel we'll be looking at you know scaling a little bit trying to put uh, infrastructure in place so that we're able to increase our launch cadence um so you know that that's something that's important to you know have rapid launches i think from a funding standpoint as i told you there's always a need for money for various different reasons right you initially raise because you're doing r&d and then later you raise because you want to vertically integrate or scale so i think those kind of needs are always going to be there the interesting thing is i think we'll also be able to have very specific use cases come in uh, as customers for our launch so we'll be able to tailor our vehicles for that that would also determine how much we're raising and when we're raising and so on um so but those are the big goals that we have in the next uh, you know 9 months to 12 months i would say Okay, Srinath. I'm going to end by asking you a little bit of a personal journey. Uh, you know, you you grew up uh, uh, with uh, teachers and physics and a lot of that around you, but you uh, always wanted to get into space tech. But the family was not particularly supportive of that idea. So electrical engineering was what you decided to do until 2016 and 2017, when you decided to come back and uh, and launch Agnikul for for people who are watching. this program uh, you know and are looking at the possibility uh, of uh, getting into the space tech ecosystem what would your message be take me through what this journey has meant for you meant to you and what is it that you would like to leave others with um i was just one clarification there i think my family was supportive is that they were very worried that i would not get any job in aerospace if i went and did a bachelor's in aerospace engineering uh, so they just want me to do something more you know job uh, friendly i would say now coming back to what someone anyone who's wanting to do something in space tech i think um, yeah i mean my biggest learning is if you're really pursuing it uh, hard enough uh, one day the doors would open i think even this launch is an example of that four attempts before we actually got through all the holes and did a, a, an actual launch which by the way was completely successful with all the parameters being nominal um yeah i think that's the biggest lesson keep knocking at the door till the doors open keep knocking at the door till the door opens and it has indeed for the team at agnikola uh, shrinath thanks so much for joining us we wish you the very best of luck and dr goenka thank you for joining us here on this special edition of young trucks we look forward to having you back on the program as you discuss uh, the progress that's being made as far as the in space uh, initiative is concerned we appreciate both of you joining us here today on a very special day for all of us here as indians with that it is time for us to wrap up this special edition of young turks thanks very much for watching stay tuned the news will continue after this short break